I want to be ready to meet him. Amen. You know, um, I think it was Sister Betty's Children's Church. It's talking about the ABCs of salvation, how to ask. All we have to do is accept that we're a sinner, believe that Jesus died. He was born of a virgin. He came to this earth. He died as a sinless Savior for our sins. He rose again, and we just confess him with our mouth, and we shall be saved. Amen? It's ABC. It's really easy. Amen? Amen. Not a lot in it. It's a free gift. Amen. Nothing we can do to merit it, Sister Sally. It's a free gift, amen, that God gave to us through his son. Amen. I want to be ready to meet him. Page 67. You may have your worldly pleasures, your silver and your gold. You may pile up all the riches that this old world can hold. But I'd rather have my Savior than with him firmly stand. For I want to be ready to meet thee in glory land. I want to be ready. Blessed command, for I want to be ready to meet. 
morning I really want to do my best to answer a question. No doubt a question I have had over the years, no doubt a question maybe that some of you had, and it would be this, why do some fall and rise again and others don't? Why do some fall and rise again and others don't? Now the first thing, uh, it seems like I'm going to be far away from my thought for a minute or two, and, I'm, I, and I may seem that way, but I want you to notice that you and I have an enemy. And his name's the devil, he's called a thief right here, and he is out to steal. He's out to steal many things in our life, but as I think of that word steal, I, he especially tries to steal my peace that I have with God. He, I, I, I believe he tries to kill my joy. Do you believe that? And I believe he dies mainly in his number one concern in doing these first two is to destroy my relationship with God. Amen. Amen. We do have this adversary, and he is out to do it, but he's out to do it with everybody. Somebody say amen. amen. So the question arises, why? Why is it that we see some that when they fail, and I'm not talking about maybe, you know, I, I am talking about failing, failing as far as, you know, some people fall back all the way out into sin. They fall back out into being a drunkard. They fall back out into adulterer or whatever, all these things that they shouldn't be doing. And we also fail, fail sometimes just do what we're supposed to be doing. Somebody say amen. And they fail, but yet they rise again. If we're all facing the same enemy, what is different between one person and another? Is that right? How many of you know that, uh, 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 oh, I can't think of the exact verse, and somebody else is a lot smarter than I am, all these things that we have in common. You know, we all have trial, tri tribulation, all these things. There's a verse that says something similar to that. I can't think of what it is, but it's true. And I want to look first, if you would, with, with, with me to what I consider to be the answer to this. And it is in Proverbs 24 and verses number 16. When we got a question, the Bible is a book of what? Answers. It is a book of answers. And that's the way we have to look at it. Bible is a book of answers. Proverbs 24 and 16, say amen when you get there. For a just man falleth seven times and 
rise up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. I want to read that again. Just read it with me if you would. A just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. Now the word falleth here in the Strong's is 5307. And I like this, it's, it's, it's the Hebrew word here for falleth, 5307 is. And it has many definitions, but in parentheses it says it's cause to and make to, and it has a bunch of words listed out beside of it. In other words, those things that, that cause to fall or make to fall. And I was, by this, whatever this Hebrew word is, I don't know, this is a strong definition. And it meant to lie down. And as I thought about that, to lie down, there is an enemy out to steal our peace, destroy our joy in God, destroy our relationship with God by trying to get us to lie down and do nothing. Now notice I added to do nothing in God. Trying to get these, trying to cause us to lighten down, to lighten down our load with God, to say we've got too much. To be hasty. Hasty in our actions. To cause to lose, like lose our priorities. To be overwhelmed, to cause to be overwhelmed with our problems and our temptations. You and I today, how many of y'all remember a message that we preached about the apple butter tart? Anybody here remember that? Well, compare the pot to God and you and I are the apple butter inside of it and the devil is trying to stir us so that we can't stick to the pot. So that we can't stick with God. And the devil today, I, I, I believe, tries to steal our peace and our joy. Amen. To destroy our relationship. You know, when we get overwhelmed with many problems, what's some of the first things that we do? Well, I need to lighten my load. I need to lie down here a minute and rest. You know, I'll, I'll get rid of these things that is in the way, you know, they, which causes us to lose our priority. Somebody say amen. amen. To be hasty in our actions. But the word fall also meant to make, and it had several definitions out there, to make rot. I, I don't know about you, but sometimes when I cause to get overwhelmed, <laughs> amen, praise the Lord, I begin to have a rotten attitude or rotten way of thinking. I like Dottie. Dottie's right here with me. Me and her must be on the same thing. I'm just kidding you, Donnie. To slay, to make slay. You know, sometimes when we get overwhelmed, we get hasty, we get, we want to lighten down our load or what, whatever we say. How many of you have ever fallen from what you're supposed to do and let this old sharp thing right here slay something? Or, or smite out. How many of y'all ever spoke something and it, both feet went in and it swallowed all the way down to the knee and you could, before you could get it even pulled out, you know. Does that happen? Or to uh, throw down, I don't really have a definition for that. So in other words today, this is what the word falleth meant by this particular Hebrew word. So, And we know that we have an adversary who's trying to get us to be overwhelmed, 
to lay down and do nothing for God, you know, to not have that abundant life in Christ Jesus, to lose our peace and our joy with Him so that our relationship will be hindered, amen, to lighten our load, uh, amen. Now, what, what happens to, to lose our priorities, to get rotten and with the attitude and slay and all these things? Now, what happens to something when it's laying down, when it's fallen? When things fall around the house, what do you do? You go around and you pick them up. And why do you do that? Because you don't want to trip over them or you don't want nobody else to. Is that right? And that's the reason it's so important for you and I not to fall. That's the reason it's so important for you and I, if we fall, glory to God, is to, to rise again very quickly. Very quickly. Now, we've solved the word fall. Now, let us look and see what the scripture said. For a just man falleth seven times, but yet he rises again. So let's look. This is going to tell us the difference. Here's a just. What does just mean? And I like this definition of just. I don't like the number of it. It's 6662 in your Strong's. And it means... Just, lawful, or righteous. So in other words, the just rise again. Those that try to do, that just try to do, somebody say amen, what is just and righteous, and we know what righteousness is, it's just simply doing what is right. Is that right? We'll explain ourselves in a minute. That's why the just rise again, because they just try to keep doing justly. They just try to keep doing what's right. You're really going to understand that in a minute. How many of y'all have ever been disgusted with yourself? Aggravated. Wanted to just lay down on God. Because you thought you'd made too big a mess. Somebody say amen. You ever been there? You're going to really understand this in a minute. Webster's Dictionary says that just means right or fair, means upright, means righteous, means lawful. This is the book of the what? The law. To do right, just, proper, fitting, correct, true, accurate, or exact, precise, or exactly. You see, when the just man falls, when the just man falls, amen, he just tries to keep doing justly. He tries to keep doing what is right, what is proper, what is fair, amen, what is righteous, what is lawful, what is correct or accurate out of the word of God, what is true. He doesn't let his lip drag the ground, amen. He doesn't step over it. When the devil tries to hand him the bat, he hands it back to him. He pleads the blood and he keeps going on with Jesus. That's why he keeps rising. He doesn't say, woe is me. You see, he just keeps on going to church. He just keeps on doing justly what he said he's going to do. I've had people tell me before, I can't, Brother Jimmy, I, I, when I get over what I'm going to, I'll be back at church. Well, that's the reason you need to be there in the first place. When I break my arm, amen, I go down there to the ER and they pull that thing, put it in the cage, and set the thing. I don't lay at the house in my misery. Somebody say amen. amen. That's right. When I'm hurting in here, glory to God, I go to God's ER. That's where I go. The devil wants me to lose my joy. He wants me to lose my privilege. That's the reason I kind of keep going on to church. 
Glory to God, where peace and joy can be found. Where something to help me, the band-aids, the stitches that probe my life back together can be found. That's the reason that I keep on asking uh, for him to forgive me. That's the reason I keep on praying uh, and I keep on the singing uh, and I keep on uh, trying to praise him uh, and I keep on uh, trying to read his word and I just keep on trying to do what he says. The just keep on doing justly. And that's the reason they rise. That's the reason they pop back up. That's the reason they're called the just. Because they just keep on. They don't stop. They don't stop. It's so easy. How many of y'all ever had the devil tell you, well, I just don't see how God can forgive that? You ever had to tell you that? You see, the just just live by faith. The Bible says that he gave us an advocate. Somebody say amen. amen. Why do you think God give you an advocate? Because he knowed that you wasn't perfect. And he knowed that you was going to mess up. So why do you think that you're going to be perfect? You're not. And anybody that ever tells you that you can reach perfection on this end of life is a lie to you. And they don't know much more about God than you knows when Sunday comes. Because you are a man or a woman. And we'll never be perfect until we reach the other side. Now, we're supposed to be itching a little bit closer and closer. Somebody say amen. We'll get to that in a little bit. But I got news for you. What happens is today is sometimes we fail to do what we need to do. Everybody better be shaking their head real good. You know you do. The devil is trying to get you directly or indirectly. Somebody say amen. amen. If he cannot get you to sin directly through temptation and trial and getting you to be overwhelmed and, and, and lie down on God and do nothing and glory to God, lie, say I got to lighten my, be hasty and lighten our load and lighten our priorities, amen, and feel sorry for yourself. I will tell you something. You will never ever get anything done for God by waiting on it being convenient or you got the time. You have to make the time. You will never get anything done. Never. You have to make it. You have to make it. I'm here to tell you right now to lose our priority in this life and this is exactly what he's trying to do because he don't want us full of joy. He doesn't want us to have peace in our life because well, ha how many of y'all have ever been not doing what you need to be doing? Did, did you really want to go to prayer, God in prayer and feel that kind of, you knew you wasn't? Is that right? Y'all ever been there? You see, it destroys that relationship. You're at peace with God. Paul, Paul learned this. Paul learned this to be content in whatever state that he was in. How do you learn to do that? Paul said, I've been beaten, I've been shipwrecked, I've been jailed, I've been all these things. Glory to God. Because you just, well, Paul messed up. He, Paul said, Paul said, that which I would do, that I don't do. Somebody say amen. amen. He just learned. Somebody say amen. amen. I just got to keep on going on by Jesus just the same. Amen. He just learned the only way to have peace is just to keep on trying to do what God had you to do. No matter what happens. No matter what takes place. We got to live by faith. Faith in what, Mother Jimmy? I got faith. I got an advocate. I got faith that when I mess up, amen. You see, see, the Word of God is my rock. 
It's what I'm a standing on. It's what I'm a believing on. It glory to God. And, 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 and my rock tells me what I'm standing and believing on. And my mind's made up. I'm just going to do what it says do. St. John 1 and 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The devil wants to tell you, you're too rotten. I, I'm here today, you're never too rotten. Somebody say amen. I, I'm here to tell you today, amen, I, that God expects us to press towards the mark, to go on to the, do the best that we can and to perfection. But he realizes that we will never be perfect until we get to the other side. Until this old mortal puts on immortality. Until this old corruption takes on incorruption. And anybody that has the audacity to tell you any different, ain't got no sense. And don't know their word. I'm here to tell you right now that you just got to live by faith that God's going to forgive. That he's going to show mercy. You got to stand on that rock. Glory to God. Amen. Psalms 136. I believe it is. The, let us give thanks unto the Lord. Amen. For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. We just got to stand on 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient. For thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness most gladly. Therefore will I glory in my infirmities that the power of God may rest upon me. Glory, hallelujah to the Lamb. Isn't it great what God can do? You say, Lord, in my weakness is your strength. And you go to God and confess that sin, he cleanses you of that blood, and you turn around and you take that weakness and you begin to glory in it, and you begin to glory in how good God is, uh, that he still delivers, uh, that he has mercy. Oh, brother, he can, oh, brother, he's still working on me, uh, and I thank God for it. Whew. I got to stand on i got to just stand there when the storm comes and, and, and know that he's going to pull me. Psalms 37 and 24 says this, Though he fall, he shall not utterly be cast down, for the Lord upholdeth them with his hand. That he's going to deliver me, Psalms 34 and 19. I just got to stand there in the midst of it, in the trial of it, in all the things there, and just keep believing God. Keep doing what's just. Just keep believing God. He's going to deliver me. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. Glory to God that he's going to strengthen me, that I can do all things through Christ Jesus which strengthens me. He's coming back with his reward one day. I fail way too much and so do you. Whether you want to admit it or not. How many of you know there's a sin of omission and a sin of commission? We can commit a sin and we can omit to do what we know to do is right. Somebody say amen. You and I today, the old devil gets on us, amen, to try to get us to lose our peace, to kill our joy, destroy our relationship. He tries to overwhelm us by stirring all these things in our life, amen causing us to get, how many of you know when you get way too many things going, you start looking for something to lay down. And the devil says, hey, you can lay that down. You can lay that work down. Oh, you can lay God's work down, then you'll have the time. Oh, glory to God, you, you know, 
cause us to lighten our load. Well, this, this, if I just lighten it here, it won't matter. Cause us to lose our priorities. And we know better. And we know better. Then things begin to rotten in our lives. Hmm. Hmm. And then, then what he, the what he turns around and tries to cause you to do. Then when you realize where you're at, he hands you the bat. He sneaks around to the other side of you and he says, "You already know the answer. Here." Take it. You done put it under the blood, but you know, God remembers. Stupid us, we take that bat, <laughs> pop ourselves over the head. What good's that do? Somebody say amen. Y'all ever been there? You ever looked up and caught yourself beating yourself over the head? You done put something by the blood two weeks ago, and you're standing there just beating the tar out of yourself. Somebody say Amen. Lip a hang in the ground. Oh, my dad, yeah. That's right. Boy, he's good. He's good. He's real good at his job. But right here's what you got to do. That wants to remind you of all your mistakes. God don't want to remind you of your mistakes. You say, Brother Jimmy, what do you mean by that? God don't want to remind you of your mistakes. Philippians 3 and 13, turn there if you would. God did not have to tie you down. He tried to lift you up. If you're down, somebody will love a trip over you. Somebody say amen, that's right. He needs you up where you can give them a hand. Look what it says. Everybody there? Got your pencils out? I want you to underline this one word here in just a minute. I'm going to tell you the word. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to tell you that word, and I want you to underline that word. Then I want you to repeat it after me. We're going to repeat it three times. I want everybody repeating it with me three times. You ready? Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. Now, who are we talking about here? This is the Apostle Paul. And if he ain't counted himself to apprehend and made them perfection, praise God, I'm here to tell you, I ain't neither of you. Amen. Brethren, I count not myself to apprehend it, to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Glory to God, I done learned a long time ago. I've been in this battle a long time. Amen. Glory to God, I'm going to forget. Somebody say amen. I'm going to forget. I'm going to forget those things which are behind. Somebody say amen. amen. See, that's what the devil's always wanting you to do. Every time you fail, every time you lay down your load, every time you get overwhelmed, you lay down your load for God. And you, you don't do what God would have you do. And every time you're hasty and you lose your priority, every time that you try to lighten your load and lay down on God, you know what? The devil reminds you of it. You say, now, Lord, forgive me. You say, now, Lord, forgive me. And he forgives you. Somebody say amen. Because he's faithful and just to do so. Ain't that right? And he gave us that. But the devil hands you that bat, and you'll stand there, Puff. just knocking yourself out all day long, as long as you'll do it, instead of standing over here on God's rock and saying, devil, I'm forgiven. Glory to God, he said he'd forgive me, and I, I'm forgiven. His mercy endureth forever. His grace is sufficient to see me through it. And I can do all things through Christ Jesus with strength in me. Now take that right hook, amen, while you're at it. When you do that, you rise again. When you don't do that, you fall. That's right. I press towards the mark. 
That's where we got to press towards. We just keep standing there in the midst of it. Lord, have forgiveness. Lord, you're going to give me the grace to get through this. Lord, you've got the mercy to see me right through it. Praise God, I can do all things through Christ Jesus. I'm standing on a solid rock. I'm forgetting those things, and I'm pressing forward. I'm going on, Jesus. I'm just going to do what God had me do, I'm just, whether I feel like it or whether I don't. I, praise God, no matter how bad you get me to beat me over the head with the bat, no matter what I'm going through, no matter how bad I messed up, I'm going to keep on going to church. I'm going to keep on praising God. I'm, gonna just keep, I'm just going to keep on doing just like I'm going to keep on singing His praise. I, I'm going to keep on praying. I'm going to keep on working. I'm going to keep on doing exactly what you had me do. I'm just going to keep on doing just like That makes the devil so mad he can't stand it. That's right. We've got to press forward. And buddy, when you're down and out, when you're overwhelmed, it's a press sometimes to do it. Somebody say amen. It's a press to do it. But you but you just got to keep on doing justly. No matter how bad you're overwhelmed. That's right. Because the devil's trying to stir our pot. Somebody say amen. He don't want you to stick with your relationship with God. He wants you to lighten your load. He wants you to, amen, he wants you to lay down. He wants you to be hasty in your action. He wants you to lose your priorities. He wants you to fail. That's exactly what he wants you to do. You see, here it is. The word of God is our rock. And we're living by faith. We just got to live by faith. The people that are just, are just living by faith. They're living by the faith in 1 John 1 and 9 that says, confess our sins and he is just and he is just to forgive us our sins. They're living by the faith that he's going to show mercy. They're living by the faith that he's going to give the grace to get through whatever we're in, 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. They're living by the faith that he is going to uphold them. They're living by the faith that he is going to deliver them and strengthen them that they can do what God would have them do. You see, they're standing on the rock. But too many people have built their Christianity on their feelings. You see, they're just serving God when they're on top of the mountain. If that's the only time you praise Him, you're in bad shape. If you're just praising Him when you feel like it, you're in bad shape. You need to shore up your foundation a little bit. If the only time, glory to God, that you're happy and have peace is when, it, when you're on top of the mountain, you're in bad shape. You need to shore up some things in your Christianity. If the only time you can have a right relationship with God is when everything's going perfect, I've got bad news for you. You're in bad shape. You need to do better. You've got to learn to press a little bit. You cannot serve God on your feelings. If you serve God on your feelings, no, you're going to get overwhelmed by the storms of this whole life. You're going to lose priorities. You're going to lay down on God. You're going to lighten your load, and you're going to be hasty in your actions. You're going to lose your priorities with God. You're going to fail. It's all there's to it. You have got to stand on God's word. And those that stand on God's word, when they fail, amen, they hand the devil back to bat, they plead the blood, they hand the devil back to bat, and they just keep on serving Jesus just the same. No matter what they did. How many of y'all ever messed up terribly? Man will beat you up, but God won't. That's right. Man will beat you to death, but God won't. What I'm trying to tell you today is this. 
I've seen a lot of people fall. If you don't believe this verse is true, let's read this again. The just man falleth seven times and rises again, but the wicked. Who's the wicked? That's them that just don't do what's right. They just don't keep on doing justly. They don't do that which is true and good and correct and right to do, and that's stand on God's word and go on with Jesus just the same. That is the wicked. And what do they do? They fall into iniquity. How many of you have seen them, glory to God, that fail a little bit? And instead of keep on coming to church and keep on reading the Bible and keep on praying and keep on praising God and keep going on with Jesus just the same, they whine, they cry, and they stay out of the house of God, and it ain't long before you know what happened. They are all for mischief ever was. In fact, the Bible tells me they could be seven times worse than what they were. That's just the way it is. There's them that rises again. That's them that pleads the blood and just keeps on serving Jesus just the same. Believes on his mercy and his grace. Amen. Praise God. Believe that he can strengthen them and they can do all things through. And then there's them that don't. And then there's them that just don't keep on going on. Which one are you going to be? I can tell you most of you today are them that just keeps on doing justly. I sure am. Amen. I see you here. You just keep on doing what you're supposed to do. But I can tell you, you can slowly slip. You can slowly slip. I've seen a lot of people slowly slip. It starts with just a little thing. And the devil says, that's all right. You go ahead and lighten your load a little bit. You go ahead and lay down your burden a little bit. You go ahead and be a little hasty in your actions. You go ahead and lose your priorities. You're overwhelmed. It's okay. It don't happen overnight. God needs you and I today to stand on the rock. He needs you and I to stand on that word of God and when we mess up, he needs us to plead the blood. He needs to turn that failure into a testimony. I'm going to read that verse, 2 Corinthians 12, 19. He said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my grace is perfect in weakness. Whatever weakness you've got, God's grace is perfect in it. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather... Glory in my infirmities, that the power of God may rest on me. I, I'm going to turn around and say, you know, I've got a hard time taking somebody and cussing me out. But with the help of the Lord, His grace is sufficient in my weakness. God forgive me and He's helped me and I'm getting over it. Somebody say amen. amen. You understand that? And it's up to you today. We know the answer. I can tell you right now that I've seen a lot of people slowly go from standing on that rock for God, slowly begin to slide. And fall all the way into mischief. I don't want to see you do that. You need to stand on the rock and have your mind made up that you're just, just going to just do what you need to do for God. You're just going to keep on. You don't care how much stuff gets put in your life and how much overwhelms you get, how much the devil tempts you to lose your priorities, lighten your load, do all these things. I'm telling you today, God is here. God needs you and I to be standing strong in the midst of the storms of this whole life because they're coming. We've not seen any storms like Paul and Peter and all them and had to stand and maybe lose their life for the cause of Christ. But it's possible in these last days that we live in that it's coming. Overseas, they're seeing it today. The way our community and the way our government who is not 
not enforcing their own laws that they have. That's the first fall of a nation. Will not enforce their own laws. They let sinful, ungodly people tell them how they need to think and act. And I, you heard exactly what I said. Sinful and ungodly. I did not study. You and I today, we need to be standing that we can help lift somebody else up to Jesus. We don't need to fall and become a stumbling block. For just a moment, every head bowed and every eye closed.